Happy Mother's Day and welcome back to my channel. Today we are making this show-stopping chocolate stiletto heel. It's the most glamorous Mother's Day treat along with chocolate covered strawberries. But these just aren't any pretty berries. You gotta make these chocolate strawberry roses too. And what better way to enjoy all these elegant treats than with a cup of tea? So to celebrate mom on her special day and surprise her with a sweet gift she'll remember, be sure to keep on watching! One of the most essential tools to achieving a fabulous chocolate heel is a good quality mold. The mold I'm using here is called the OG Box brand. It is magnetic and able to stand up on its feet. When comparing to other molds, it is slightly higher in price than the other cheaper options on Amazon and some local cake shops. However, if you do a quick search, many customer reviews on the other brands said they received a completely different shaped item than the one in the picture, so you may not get exactly what you ordered. And it also has a shorter platform, so with the OG box, you definitely get what you pay for since the design is more realistic with the defined platform. It is such an amazing mold and you won't be disappointed. To start molding, it is important to melt your chocolate to a fluid enough consistency. That way the shoe has a smooth, shiny look inside and out. I microwave my Merkins white chocolate melts for a round of 30 seconds and give it a stir. Then mix in your thinning agent of choice. My favorites are refined coconut oil or easy thins. Just keep in mind, although coconut oil works wonders, I advise to check that your customer has no allergies before using. Other options are the Easy Thins which are similar to Paramount Crystals and continue microwaving in 15 second intervals until the chocolate is mostly melted and feel free to gradually add more thinning agent as needed. The key is to reach a fluid enough consistency while staying below 90 degrees. I check my temperature with an infrared thermometer every once in a while because although there may be chunks, you don't want to zap this too much. Overheating above the 90 degrees can form white spots in your chocolate heel after molding. If those stubborn chunks won't go away, I recommend letting the heat of the bowl do most of the work. Then microwave for only 2-3 to three seconds more to avoid overheating. Once you're done melting, it is time to color your chocolate. For this blushy pink color, I mixed in a combination of Color Mill in the shade pink and Chef Master Candy Color in pink as well. The Color Mill is a softer pink, so I add in about 5 drops of that first and only 2-3 to three drops of the Chef Master since it is a deeper pink, but it's all about which shade you prefer best. My tips and tricks to make the molding process even easier are to pour the chocolate into a silicone melting cup. I purchased mine from Michael's Craft Store and use them for so many things, especially when molding chocolate covered Oreos. It keeps your workspace more neat, which we all need as much as possible because this gets messy. Also, you should have a wooden skewer handy to remove any air bubbles and a paper towel to wipe around the edge. We are all ready to mold at 87 degrees. First, I fill up the heel and let it overflow into the bottom toe box, making sure to add enough so that you can thoroughly coat your mold. Now I'm taking the skewer and running it through the heel to pop any air bubbles and begin to let the chocolate flow all the way to the top. Once coated, turn the mold and keep letting the chocolate flow in the same direction. This method keeps a layer of chocolate smooth inside without appearing clumpy or bumpy. The hardest part is coating the front by the toe box. Turn to coat it and pour a small amount into that front area if needed so that it doesn't make the whole layer clumpy and dump everything out once you've finished. After each layer, I'm wiping the outer edge. This is going to prevent any cracks from forming, and we are all done with the first layer. As you can see, the inside is smooth so far. I let this set at room temperature without putting it in the fridge before applying the next layers. I did three layers in total, all the same way, molding at 87 degrees and one continuous flow. 
This is why it's so important to put enough chocolate in without adding more so that when it sets, the inside looks as pretty as the outside. Finished by pouring all that extra chocolate out, it is time to place your shoe in the fridge after completing the third layer and allow this to chill for 4 hours. It is so exciting that after 4 hours, we have the perfect stiletto platform heel. Sometimes chocolate gets stuck between the cracks, so I like to slip a knife through to loosen the corners and open up the magnets. Make sure to carefully lift it out and handle while wearing gloves to prevent fingerprints from getting on the surface. And notice how smooth the border came out without any cracks. This glamorous heel needs some elegant strawberries to go inside and strawberry roses to match. The only thing I forgot to include on the screen were the Merkin's chocolate mouths, but all the other materials are what you will need to create your strawberries. I have two different types of wooden skewers in a thinner and thicker diameter. And the reason why my strawberries aren't all the same size is because the roses are made with smaller berries and the larger berries are for decorating the shoe. After they have been washed and dried thoroughly, twist, twist, twist the stems off of the smaller berries. I've never tried this before making the strawberry roses, so this is definitely something new. I'm inserting the thinner skewers into these smaller strawberries. You don't need any chocolate to anchor them in, they should stay firmly in place. And insert the thicker skewers into the larger berries. Our helper today is Princess Lily and she's helping us dip the strawberries. I melted the merkins using the same method for achieving fluid consistency and dipping at that 87 degrees. If you can still see through the strawberry after the first coat, go right back in and give it a second dip before the chocolate sets to keep the chocolate smooth and opaque. Lighter colors like pink and white tend to be more sheer. I stand my berries up in floor foam for a cleaner look without the flat back and as a side note I wanted to let you know that different brands of chocolate melts are dipped at different temperatures they are not interchangeable I have another video up on my channel about dipping your treats in sweet tooth fairy brand and Wilton candy melts the craft store brands have a different composition and are dipped at higher temperatures it is similar to a science so be sure to follow these specific temperature guidelines for the brand that you want to use. When our strawberries have set, I'm wrapping the skewers of the ones that we are transforming into roses in green floral tape to look like the stem of the rose. Tightly wrap and cut the end, then tuck into the bottom of the skewer. The modeling chocolate is what is going to make our roses bloom. This is white modeling chocolate from Satin Ice so that I am able to make a custom color to match the color of the stiletto. Start by kneading a piece, working in your hands and adding one drop each of the Chef Master candy color in color mill pink right on top. I find it is better to use less, a little color goes a long way. If you want to deepen the color a bit, it is easier to gradually add more as you go rather than to take away. And it's helpful to roll the modeling chocolate with a fonded rolling pin to fully mix in that color. My favorite way to create petals easily is to cut them out with petal shaped cutters by rolling the modeling chocolate between two sheets of parchment paper. I find this so much faster to make more petals in a shorter amount of time with them all being the same size rather than shaping your own by hand. As you are working with the modeling chocolate it can get sticky and gooey just like when chocolate starts to melt. So the parchment paper is going to be your best friend for this. First for the inner bud, take the smallest cutter and cut out two petals. To help with the sticking, dust a small amount of cornstarch onto the cutter. Make sure not to use too much cornstarch though or your petal won't stick to the strawberry. After cutting the petal shapes, I flatten them out. The thinner your petals are, the easier they will stick to the strawberry. 
To form your inner bud, wrap one petal around one half of the strawberry and pinch it in. Then repeat with the other half, making the inner bud instead of leaving the strawberry open with a bunch of petals looks so much more realistic. For your next row, cut out three petals with the medium sized cutter. This time trim the sharp edges off the bottom and flatten between the parchment paper to thin them out. Press your petals on by overlapping between each seam. When it is firmly in place, feel free to fan them out. Sometimes when working with gloves, they can leave lines and wrinkles on the modeling chocolate. But no worries, we will be able to smooth them out later on. Finish your last row of 5 petals with the largest size cutter. It is especially essential to thin them out for the last row since the larger petals are the most heavy. So take your time doing this a little extra. The best part about the petal cutters are that they are the perfect length to tuck underneath the strawberry. If you are rolling these by hand, there's not as much of a guide for how much you need to cover the entire strawberry without the chocolate peeking through. Also, I wanted to show you a quick fix if your modeling chocolate doesn't stick. Brush on a small amount of water and it will stick right on. To fully bloom the rose, fan out the petals and smooth out any lines. This part is best done without gloves using the heat of your hands. The roses are looking so pretty in pink. Now all we need are the classic berries with a touch of sparkle. My absolute favorite luster dust of all time is the Wilcom brand in blush pastel pink. I also use this same product in my free cake pops class and my strawberry bouquet video. If you have watched that too, it should look very familiar. For best results, use a larger fluffy brush to pack on that color without any streak marks. And when it comes to luster, of course, I didn't forget about the high heel. The shoe does wobble a bit. I stabilize it by keeping my gloved hand behind it, being careful not to press too hard. You don't want to melt the chocolate or leave marks on the surface. Many times you see the chocolate heels out there and they're super blinged out and covered with glitter. Although it looks beautiful, these coarser types of glitter are only non-toxic and not FDA approved. All the products I'm using today are 100% edible and FDA approved, including this gold tinker dust. As you can see, it is more like a dust or powdery texture similar to an eyeshadow. That's exactly how it's going to look on your berry. I apply it with a shaker to give it a muted antique look. Note how the dust clings onto everything even when you wipe it away, not just the drizzle. If you want the glittery drizzle lines super clean and defined, you're not going to achieve that look with this product, okay? I don't want a customer to ask you for something like that and it doesn't come out that way. It's similar to how if you stick craft glitter on something with an adhesive or a glue, it will only stick on the glue, but eyeshadow goes everywhere, right? An example of the glitter drizzle technique was in this video, I demonstrated how techno glitter and disco dust looks. Unfortunately, those products are the non-toxic kind purely for decorative use only and not consumption. If you want to compromise between the two, fine gold sanding sugar is another option that is completely edible. Right after drizzling, I shaked on the tinker dust while the chocolate was still wet and brushed off the excess. It gives the strawberries a golden glow and antique effect. The last little detail on the strawberries is a pink rose. I pressed some pink fondant into this cavity on my rose mold, then brushed on some luster and attached the roses to the strawberry with edible adhesive. You can also use melted chocolate if you don't have the adhesive but it's so much neater and lays flatter on the berry. Last but not least, let's decorate everything for mom. Many of you guys ask about these gold butterflies. They are from Amazon and come in a variety of sizes. I use the smallest size. If you were sticking them on a box, you could attach them on with blue dots that come with the set and top off the heel with a Mother's Day cupcake topper. 
All these products will be linked in the description box below if you would like them for your Mother's Day treats. I hope you guys enjoyed making this chocolate heel with me and it gave you some stylish inspiration for Mother's Day. Like this video if it did. Wishing a happy Mother's Day to all moms out there. It's Christina here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.